um, more hair, right? I'm just kind of curious uh, who's in the audience. So, how many of you are faculty at in higher education? Both? Okay. Um, and what about the rest? Staff? 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 The interactive multimedia department of my college in New Jersey. Um, the, um, this semester I taught for the first time in this format the game development course that was, um, that was a full semester project. Um, and um, I want to start with this quote because um, this is kind of how I felt for so much of the semester. Um, so I think it was, uh, the semester has been a learning experience for me and for my students. Um, in designing the course, uh, I made some, um, some bad assumptions that in hindsight feel kind of obviously bad. <laughs> but at the beginning of the semester, it didn't necessarily feel that way. Um, so this presentation is largely a story about those assumptions and about kind of lessons learned from that process. I am an A into technology too. I know it says the, the title has the word base word base camp in it, which is a project management tool. Um, but um, like I, I think this was mentioned by both speakers actually. This this we're talking about we're really talking about people and about students and about how they learn. Uh, the tools are sort of there to facilitate that process, but um, but I'm gonna be talking a lot more about kind of why the why of the tools and the, the how. Those questions. So, um, this is also a story about sort of working within a limited curriculum um, to try and create an experience that mirrors as closely as possible a professional game development experience, uh, while at the same time allowing students to be learners, um, to encourage them to accept their role as having to be tough critics of each other's work as they're working on these projects and to encourage them to get comfortable and practice their roles as professionals. So, um, so I'm going to start with sort of talking about the course a little bit, um, uh, the design and uh, so the, the first part is really where the course fits in our curriculum. Um, the second part is sort of the design of the actual course and assumptions that I made. Um, then talk about the features of the two technologies that, that um, the campus uses and that I used for the class. Um, and then kind of what, what I changed and what I learned from that um, process. So. Um, and I like to call these assumptions rather than, than learning goals because um, from the instructor side, really, I, I was doing a lot of this stuff for the first time in this, this course model, so they really were assumptions or hypotheses, I guess, that I was testing. Um, so uh, right now, at, at, in our program, uh, we're not a game development program, but there's a games area of the program. So these are the two courses that exist for students. So it's not enough to get you to professional game development. So one of the challenges is I, I feel a pretty strong responsibility to uh, build as much meaningful experiential learning into these classes as possible so that students can continue their study of game development independently um, with independent studies, with their senior thesis projects, um, that kind of thing. But it's, it is limited, so it's, it's very much a challenge for students who want to do this kind of work. We have just these two classes right now. So, um, so this is the course from this semester. Uh, team-based, project-based approach. Uh, there's a full semester long project. Project. We ended up with three teams of three students, one team four. Um, each team basically had these two roles, kind of for sure, and the other roles were fluid depending on um, the ability of the students. And then we had a new, a new sort of wrinkle this semester. We had two audio, two students who were interested in doing audio production for games, so they. Um, in the class, they began kind of trying to looking at it as a as a game studio like space. They were we we treated them sort of as freelancers. So they were they were doing contract work for all the teams. So so um, one student was doing sound design, and she met with 
all the teams to kind of gather their needs for sound effects for the game, and then went to work doing kind of holy work um, uh, to do recording and sound editing. Um, and there was one student who was uh, interested in music composition, and, and all the students coming into this class, I should say, were, were prepared. So, that, so for the most part, they had, they had taken done previous coursework um, where they, they, this is not a beginner course, so they weren't coming in kind of fresh and being expected to all of a sudden learn all this stuff on their own. So, uh, so, the, so that was a wrinkle. It made, made kind of a lot of parts of the class more challenging, but I think also more rewarding and the products were better um, at the end. Um, audio is often overlooked in, in game development, uh, and it, it makes such a big difference um, when when, uh, especially with student games, audio is sort of the last thing a lot of students think about if they're not audio inclined. Uh, so, so that was good to have. Um, so, a couple assumptions that I made. Um, each team had to publish their game at the end. Actually, we're right at the end of the semester now, so they're in the process of polishing those up and getting ready to publish. They're all going to use a website called itch.io, which is an independent game. Um, storefront. Um, it's great because it's not, there's not an approval process because they don't have to get their games. Um, it's not like, a, not like an app store review type process. They can just publish, they can set a price point if they want to. Um, what they, all the teams had to reach basically a, a, a polished demo by the end of the semester. Uh, my assumption was this would motivate students to push for a quality product kind of within the teams and uh, among the teams. Uh, so each student also had to account for at least six hours of work per week outside of class in a, in a weekly report. Um, and this actually, Basecamp actually facilitated this really well, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, my assumption was this, this would create accountability to uh, each individual um, student with each other in the class because the way um, Basecamp has a really neat feature called um, automatic check-ins, where you can basically set up a duration where it will ask everybody in a team or a project or a group some question and mine was you know, uh, how did you spend your time this week uh, so and then everyone sees the answer so it's a it's an open discussion it's not it's not kind of just an assignment from student to me that only i see it's a it's sort of a public forum where uh, and people would like clap on each other's posts because the face that has like a, a clap feature that, that plays like a Super Mario Brothers coin noise when you use it. <laughs> One of the things I liked a lot about Basecamp is that it's fun. Um, it's not, it doesn't feel like kind of worky work. Um, so, uh, and then myself, uh, I, I ended up kind of serving as a de facto executive producer where, uh, so the teams owned these projects, but um, I, uh, I sort of ended up in this role. This is one of those things that sort of I didn't necessarily realize at the beginning, but realized kind of about four or five weeks in that, oh yeah, this, this is actually the right role for the instructor at this conference. Um, so I'll be a lot more intentional the next time we run this, this class with that role. I think that I think that'll help the projects a lot. Um, my assumption was that students would tear it up about the product that they would be sort of sufficient and self-directed. Um, so there's one major project, this game project, was 75% of the grade. The rest of the grade was sort of made up of optional assignments, and I put optional <coughs> quotes on the next slide, and I'll explain that. Uh, my assumption was that this would be a significant enough of a grade to, for students who needed, there are a lot of senior thesis students who just weren't, didn't have a lot of time. So if a C was enough to the last semester, like I, I wanted to sort of make it optional to pursue these other assignments. So these are the assignments um, here. Um, so optional is in quotes because they were all worth a, a set number of points, but students could do more than one of them. Um, the professional engagement assignments had things like um, conducting an informational interview with somebody in the field that you're interested in. Um, going through a professional portfolio review, uh, doing 
going attending a professional event, applying to an opportunity like graduate school or um, or an internship. Um, so what I would do is basically grade how how appropriate the materials they prepared were for those positions. So as a way of kind of getting feedback on professional position uh, of these times. Um, participation, so students could elect to be graded on participation in class, and then they essentially, uh, and I borrowed this straight out of um, uh, Weimer's book on um, where I started teaching. Basically, they, they wrote a, uh, they would write a paper kind of outlining, outlining, outlining their, their participation goals, like how are they going to participate, and how am I going to assess them? They had to kind of set some goals. Some of them said, "I'm going to do. I'm going to write up a couple of tutorials and post them on Basecamp for other people, other students to use, and that was acceptable." Excuse me. Um, others uh, wanted to focus on the in-class aspect and said, "I'm going to actively go around and, and find out how the groups are, you know, what doing on their projects, and offer to play test and give feedback." And so they were very. Um, there was kind of a wide range of with ways of being in the class, uh, ways of participating. Um, and then the reflection and synthesis assignments were um, students could do a dev blog, which is a common thing in games. You post kind of every screenshot Saturday, hashtag, people post what they're working on, post a screenshot, here's what I'm working on this week. Um, so some students elected to do that. Um, there was also another part of that was, uh, was building a, a learning database, basically. So using something like Mind map or Google Doc or some other mode of keeping track of resources, so like tutorial links they found useful, um, and then connecting those things together. So kind of mapping out what they learned over the course of the semester. Um, so they had the game project, and then they had kind of pick from they, they were able to pick from the sort of menu of other projects to make up the, the rest of their grade for the semester. Um, and uh, my assumption there was that these, these assignments would contribute to, uh, they were designed anyway to contribute to uh, the students who are envisioning themselves as professionals. Like, I'm, I'm going to go to this, this event, you know, the uh, job fair or a you know, conference. Some of them went to like the straight up kind of game design conferences. So, uh, so that was a good, uh, uh, good I had, there was some success. Um, that's my last slide. So that, that's a that's a congrats um, on <laughs> um, But so I'm going to switch over now to um, just doing a comparison between uh, Canvas and Basecamp, and talk a little bit about um, what I'm going to and um, what you know, what's going on. Um, this is I'll actually talk about this now because it's it's really about uh, I, I I thought one of my assumptions was that. Okay, I can't use two tools. I gotta put everything in basic. Which that may sound kind of dumb, so we don't know that. <laughs> I uh, realized at the end of the semester that uh, basic is not very good at some things. So uh, that's what I'll talk about now. To do that, I'd be to switch. Um, but yeah, this quote um, really. Uh, spoke to me when I read it. I was like, yeah, this, this explains my semester. Sal um, <laughs> uh, Segoyan used to do, he's a um, musician and programmer and, and um, worked on automation technologies at Apple. So um, thinks a lot about kind of how software, what software you should use for what purpose. So, so Campus. Uh, to do that, I'm going to switch back to here. Probably. So, group based campus. Campus. Um, so, Canvas, uh, for those who haven't used it, it's, it's probably a lot like most other course management systems. Um, so, there's a way to put in this is one of my classes for the semester. Um, just ignore all those two grade items over there at the end of the semester. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, so, I have uh, three units here for my uh, introduction to interactive computing class. So, there's 
Uh, you can set things up in modules, you can get assignments, you can set due dates, you can put up a syllabus, there are discussions, there are groups, there are all those things that you would expect out of a course management system. So um, my thought was, oh, like I said earlier, I, I don't want I don't want to overwhelm the students with like too many tools. So we're just gonna use this one. Um, so here's what happened with Basecamp. Uh, Basecamp is great for a lot of things. So um, it has uh, a um, it has a section called Hey that just is all the stuff that happened since the last time you were here, which is really useful. Um, campfires are kind of um, chats that uh, contain multiple people. I can ping any number of students. It'll show me the most recent uh, pings that I've had. So there's a way to do like kind of quick messaging. Um, there's uh, there's search. Uh, I can generate reports, which is actually really nice. I really think Canvas also has this, but. Uh, the stuff that Basecamp does well is it tends to be a little more accessible. So I can click on reports and uh, say, some, what has someone been up to and, and get a whole list of like all of the single students activities on Basecamp. So that was nice. Um, what I did for the class was set up, uh, Basecamp works on uh, the level of, there's kind of three levels of organization. There's uh, the organization itself. And for that, that's Professor Fishburne's courses and projects. Basecamp has a free teacher account, which is one of the reasons I decided to use it. Um, and they allow you to have one organization. So I have this one organization. I have, uh, there are teams and there are projects. So the projects ended up being kind of, here are the, um, here are the four game projects that I got worked on and people got, people added each other to, to their projects and, and did a lot of kind of collaboration within that. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, there were also, these were not as successful. Um, I created kind of discipline-centric discipline, discipline -centric teams so that's to, to, to try and facilitate conversation across teams between artists, programmers, um, et cetera, uh, and, and other areas. That did not work as well, uh, I think, like some of the other things I, I, I if I was going to do that again, I would be more intentional about sort of explaining it integrating into the course. But the area that the areas where it worked um, really well was in, uh, in the projects. So students did um, uh, you know assigned each other to do's they kept these to-do lists um, the automatic check-ins um, teams could set up their own versions of those if they wanted to they can sort of documents here they can schedule things and they had they this team didn't actually meet physically outside of class at all. So they did all of their collaboration in the um, in Basecamp. Um, so uh, I only have one minute left, so I do want to show you just the, the automatic check in because that for me was the most useful feature. Um, so if I go to the class team, so this was our whole class, um, this was the automatic check in that I asked. So how did you spend your time on your project and individual assignments this week? Be sure to account for all that worked. Um, so that worked well for me, I think. Um, but I heard, what I heard from the students was that actually they didn't need that to be accountable. What they, what made them accountable was their teams. Um, so I, it's still useful for me. I would probably do that part of the class again to get feedback from them. Um, and I'll just, um, I'll close by saying that the reason I kept mentioning the, that um, sort of two the one tool thing didn't work was that um, I ended up posting assignments on Basecamp and they are they were sort of these they ended up with this sort of this huge list of stuff and because students were able to choose I couldn't there's no, there wasn't an easy way in Basecamp to like assign one thing to lots of people it's designed for me to delegate things to like a single person so for me to say here you do this not all of you do this one thing. Um, so it was pretty tedious for that. So what we, the conclusion we came to basically is that this worked really well, use it again, put all the assignment class stuff in 